Toyota loves hybrids, hates EVs, and they sell the Hilux pickup basically everywhere, except the US and Canada, but things are about to change. Nah, you still can't buy it here, but the all new ninth generation Toyota Hilux is going electric, like full blown battery electric. But is it worth getting charged up about? Let's compare to two other midsize electric pickups that it's gonna have to compete with. Let's start off talking about the Hilux in general. Inside North America, the Ford F-150 is king, but globally, the Hilux sells more regular cab, extended cab, and crew cab. Since 1968, it's offered customers all around the world a tough, utilitarian, mid-sized platform to get stuff done. It's not sold in North America because America has the so-called chicken tax on imported pickups, so Companies like Toyota choose to assemble pickups here, and that gives them a chance to design them to be a little bigger, a little more powerful, and more pricey. Thus, we get the taco, and the rest of the world gets the Hilux. Why would Toyota make an electric pickup? EV haters are going to be disappointed with them. After all, Cybertruck is a dud. Ram canceled their all-electric pickup, and Ford is rumored to be considering pulling the plug on the Lightning. Why would Toyota do this? Answer, developing markets are quietly going electric. We here in the West look at markets like Thailand and think they can't afford electric vehicles. And that's true. They can't afford $100,000 mega pickups with massive batteries that drive themselves. But they can afford EVs like this, especially if they're made in China, where the automakers are eager to find new customers overseas. Thus, while the U.S. is struggling to stay above 10% market share, Thailand electric vehicles got to 18%. Brazil is only 4%, but they're experiencing up to 30% growth. And Ethiopia currently has 7% market share, but is growing at nearly 60%. All of them are not opposed to Chinese companies coming in under the right terms. BYD, for example, has plants in both Brazil and in Thailand. And most of these governments are willing to put incentives behind the transition to e-mobility and or grow renewable electricity to meet the electrical demand. The EV haters don't have to worry too much. The new Toyota Hilux will still offer combustion engines, a 2.7 liter gas engine in some markets or a 2.8 liter turbo diesel. There's also a mild hybrid variant of that turbo diesel you don't see many hybrid diesel combinations. That's because diesel engines are more expensive to start with, and thus adding hybrid technology makes them too expensive for the market. Plus, diesel engines don't run efficiently starting and stopping all the time, and that's what a hybrid basically wants to do. Plus, Toyota will offer a... They're gonna offer a hydrogen fuel cell. I mean, at what point are they just gonna... At what point is Toyota just going to give up and realize nobody wants their hydrogen fuel cells, but apparently they're going to try again in 2028. Yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Enough about being electrified. Let's talk battery EV. The Hilux Trevo E is a functional all-electric mid-size pickup truck unveiled in Thailand, roughly the same size as the Isuzu D-Max EV, which was announced earlier in 2025, and the JAC T9 EV, which, as you might guess, is one of those pesky Chinese brands looking to up and establish Japanese brands who've enjoyed strong sales in developing markets for years. Dimensions of these trucks are, you know, about four to five inches shorter than the Tacoma that we have in the U.S. I should mention that the Hilux is currently also offered as an SUV called the Fortuner. So a BEV variant of that could also be coming soon. Reaction from the anti-EV crowd is one of disappointment with Toyota. Reaction from the pro-EV crowd is also kind of negative. As you'll see, they're accusing Toyota of deliberately making a bad BEV so you can prove that nobody wants to buy one. You know, let's look at the specs. The BEV is a dual motor, dual E axle, so it's all wheel drive. Power, though, is only 144 kilowatts combined. That's 193 horsepower. That sounds anemic, and yeah, yeah, 0 to 62 will take around 10 seconds. 
It has a 59 kilowatt hour battery, which is small for a pickup of that size. And here's where I get to talk about the different test procedures for a range. 300 kilometers NEDC is more like 240 kilometers on Europe's WLTP, and that equals 149 miles. So on the EPA test, figure that might be around 130 miles. That's why people who like EVs are saying that Toyota is deliberately dragging their heels, underpowered and limited range. But other markets are not like the US compared to a comparable diesel engine Hilux. Horsepower is a little less, but torque is surprisingly more for the BEV. With that in mind, let's compare Toyota's BEV to what we know of the Isuzu and the JAC. All three BEVs are dual motor, all wheel drive. The Toyota and Isuzu offer similar power, but the JAC is a, is a little monster. In fact, JAC is called the Hunter inside China and in some other markets, but globally it's called the T9. The Isuzu has a slightly bigger battery than the Toyota for better range, but once again, JAC offers more. In terms of EPA miles, it would be just a little less than 200 miles. These four-door crew cab models aren't just passenger princesses, they also do work too. All three of them stack up pretty well compared to their diesel counterparts. Toyota does offer the fastest peak DC charging of the three, that's great, but it's kind of a mixed bag. The most common DC charger you'll find in Thailand is only 50 kilowatts, so that's your limit. But we are starting to see more powerful hardware coming in that market, offering more than 100 kilowatts. And since these BEV pickups will go to other markets that may offer more powerful charging, they should support faster, fast charging. As for other attributes, the styling is, is fine. On the inside, it's actually pretty damn nice. There are a pair of 12.3 inch screens, one for the digital instrument cluster and the other for the center infotainment system. It supports over the air software updates. And since it's a battery EV, there's no manual transmission. So that's a luxury feature. In conclusion, the Toyota Hilux BEV is a decent pickup for most markets. Pickups around the world are not cyber beasts. They are modestly powered and have an electric range that is limited. But for those markets, it's fine. The Toyota Hilux BEV isn't coming to America, and it may receive a lukewarm reception in Europe due to that range. But in Thailand, it offers competitive performance. As for the price of the Isuzu, those numbers haven't been released yet. But Toyota Thailand has, and you can see again why they need to be worried. JAC offers more power, bigger battery, better range, with payload and towing better than Toyota, all for less BAT. That's the Thai currency. The Toyota is manufactured in Thailand, so it may qualify for EV subsidies that the JAC doesn't, being an import. I do believe that Toyota put in a good effort, not a great effort in making the electric Hilux, but it ain't good enough. And EV sales in developing markets are growing at a pace that should alarm EV haters. But at least the anti-EV crowd can hold on to their diesel engines and look forward to a hydrogen fuel cell Hilux in 2028. Yeah, yeah you didn't think I got over that announcement, did you?